So in what way do we look at this as a, golden, a global age of, of turbulence? And from my point of view, the, the real turbulence that we should all be worried about is what's happening to the global climate system. And the global climate system is already in a massive state of transition. And that transition, for example, can be measured by what is happening in the North Pole region, where the North Pole region, the Arctic Circle, is now heating up at four times the rate of the rest of the planet. And so while the rest of the planet is at 1.3, 1.4 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial level, that part of the world is now in excess of 3 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial level. And we all know that we should have tried to stay below 1.5. Now what is happening in the Arctic Circle region is, for example, and there are many things that are threatening us, but perhaps the biggest is the melting of ice on Greenland. We've just had, three weeks ago, a detailed study reported over the last 37 years of the loss of ice over Greenland. And this has been measured over that 37 years average, a loss of ice of 30 million tonnes per hour. And that means we've lost a trillion tonnes of ice over that period of time. When all of the Greenland ice has melted, and I say when rather than if, if when it's all melted, global sea levels will have risen by 7.5 metres, that is 24 feet. We certainly wouldn't be sitting here at anything like that amount of sea level rise. It might ha take 200 years to happen, but within the near future, we're going to see massive challenges from sea level rise. Now, when I say sea level rise, global temperatures are now rising, the global weather system is in transition. So this is the turbulence that we should all be facing together. So when I look at the age of turbulence, I also see it as an opportunity for us to understand we have an external threat and we all need to stop having wars, stop having arguments even. Let's pull together and manage this massive problem. So the question now has to be faced. How is the decision-making achieved that will meet the level of this global challenge? We're all in this together, but how do we actually understand, first of all, that we're all in this big challenge together, and then how do we provide the sort of leadership that takes us through it? Now, I think we also need to analyse what, what, what are the causes of this massive change in our global climate system? And it's very easy to say, well, that's burning fossil fuels and taking out forests. We know that. But there's a much bigger problem. And that problem is that the, the size of the global population is now 8 billion. I'm not going to complain about the size of the population because that has developed out of our economic system and out of a, the development, for example, of vaccines. That's been a massive process by which our global population has increased. So these are good factors, and human well-being has improved as well. But now I have to say, this process is not fit for purpose in the 21st century. So now how do we, what sort of a transition do we require? We have to move across to a global economic system that recognizes that we have a finite planet with finite resources, that the natural world of which we are a part, not apart from, we are a part of the natural world, that natural world is being destroyed by our actions through that economic system. We're simply destroying the atmosphere by pouring carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere. We're also doing this to the landmass, where we are removing the, the biosystems of the world most of the remaining biosystems are either human beings or those animals that serve human beings. And there is no future in that. I say there's no future in it because we have to manage our ecosystems because we only survive if our ecosystems deliver our ability to survive.